Hey guys, OJ Albani here, bringing you guys our next Draft League Twitter discussion. Today, we're going to be talking about what we think are the most overrated or overpriced Pokemon in the format. Last week, we did the most underrated, so go check that out if you haven't done so already. Um, obviously, make sure to drop a like on the vid if you enjoy, and sub to the channel if you're new. We're on our way to 2,000. We're getting pretty darn close. And uh, yeah, drop in the comments the most overrated Pokemon in PalDX. Paldea Dex Draft, sorry. And um, let me know if you have any other Twitter question ideas. I'm actually running pretty dry on them right now. So if you have any cool ideas and discussions you'd like to see from myself and other people, um, go ahead and drop them in the comments. But uh, yeah, that being said, um, we can kind of talk about mine first because I didn't really talk about it in my tweet. And it's going to be Iron Bundle, which is weird, especially if you play a lot of Smogon. You know, it's obviously pretty incredible in that format, right? Like it's it's very, very strong. Um, dual stabs basically unresisted and it just nukes through things. However, in draft, I haven't been impressed with it. Now, I don't think it's bad by any means, and I would definitely draft it. It's obviously like a top 10 mod in the format, um, debatably top five. Like, it's very solid, but I've gotten the impression from a lot of people that they think it's broken. Um, like, really, really good. Like, a damn near top one Pokemon, whereas I don't agree. Um, my reason being, right, is at least in my personal experience in playing it thus far, I feel like unless it's specs, it really misses out on the Okos on the offense that it's trying to kill um, and really misses out on the two it KOs on the, you know, fatter things it's trying to kill. Uh, things like, you know, like even like Spadef, like or like AV Slowbro or Slowbro. Um, what do you call it? Slow King. Um, things like the Dunsparce. And I'm just naming mods that I've drafted a lot up to this point. Um, it really struggles to hit those two it KOs and Okos if it's not you know, a specs variant. And if it is a specs variant, it seems either very easy to wear down with hazards, which is the same thing for non boots variants, so scarf as well, um, specs as well. It seems very easy to wear down. Um, and it's a lot easier to revenge kill with really any Scarfer, especially with its really poultry, terrible base Spadef. There's a lot of really cool tech options that you can run for it. Um, there's different vacuum ways and things like that. Now that's like a bit of a smaller niche because there's not actually a lot of Pokemon in Paldea that can learn that. Um, but between hazards, faster Scarfers, Scarf sets themselves not being very strong, um, and boot sets being met. And on top of that, the fact that your only reliable strong water stab is either Hydro Pump or Terra Blast if you want to Terra Water. Um, it's just not it's just not a Pokemon that I super find like overly broken and threatening. Now, again, I think it's very good. It has great potential, especially with hazards and you turning and flip turning around a little bit, and then you get that opportunity to click that Hydro Pump, and if you hit it, it's gonna do a lot of damage. But really, often, I feel like I can draft Pokemon, and maybe it's just common Pokemon I draft, things like the Dunsparce, um, you know, and Slow King and things like that, that I can kind of just outbulk it and kind of wear it down over time with hazards or, you know, chip it down or give it an opportunity to never really come in. Um, it struggles against offense unless it's like a scarf set um, and it struggles against fat unless it's specs and I think boots is kind of bad um, personally. So yeah, that's, I don't know, that's my take on Valley and I could be tripping, let me know what you guys think. Next up, we have another hot take. So I'm not the only hot take guy. We have Matt O'Shea here. Nathaniel O'Shea saying Valiant is mid. Other Paradox Pokemon have at least one good defense stat. Valiant doesn't. It's hard to set up with Valiant uh, when you get O-Code easily. Move uh, move some from either offense to defense or to death. It breaks decently well, but that means you can't really run booster energy as well. I don't think I agree. I have seen Valiant perform above and beyond incredible in a lot of games. Um... I used it one game in a tour, um, and I won the game, and I loved it. I think I brought Life Orb mixed, and it just absolutely ripped through my opponent. So it is a great breaker, which Matt does acknowledge here. It's a solid breaker, um, whereas I think like Valiant does best. But really, especially with Terra, you can find opportunities to set up. You're not frail, frail, right? Like you can't be like frail, frail. Let me see. We're gonna go to the handy dandy team builder I had pulled up ahead of time this time. Valiant, um, 74 HP. 90 defense so on physical threats you can definitely um find an opportunity to set up especially if you like you know get rid of one of your weaknesses and tear into a fairy or a fighting type i think that like terra fairy is usually pretty incredible um you can really find an opportunity to do so and especially if you're setting up with a calm mind or a swords dance or something of the sorts you can really go pretty fat on this thing i mean i got knocked out of smog tour because of a max hp like super super bulky um booster energy calm minding valiant it just absolutely smashed me i couldn't kill it and it kept boosting and once it got out two calm minds it didn't really need any offense it okayed everything on my team still pretty much so um i really think valiant's pretty incredible so i do disagree there i get what he's saying um but i think if you play and use valiant properly especially with good hazards and hazards are so good in this format right now um i think it's a really incredible pokemon personally so i'm gonna disagree there i really like valiant i really want to try it next up we have gravy saying hydreigon for me it was a top tick 
was a top tier pick for me in BBR, but I rarely did I see it a game where it didn't look better than my lower tiers. The best game I had was against you. I don't have to say that on my video, man. I don't want people reminded of when I got smashed by D weakness policy. Um, or when I brought rocks to you with against Q, since it too lost some util utility and power creep has pushed it down. I actually agree. Now, I did recently draft Hydreigon. <laughs> um, so... I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I still think it has value. I think it's just we kind of have to slowly adjust and realize that Hydra isn't going to be what it was before. Offensively, it's still phenomenal. I think it's actually very good offensively in this format. And if it kept Roost, I would actually consider it a top tier Pokemon right now because of the fact that there are so little fairies going around right now. There's so little of them and most of them kind of just lose to Hydreigon anyways uh, because it's so strong with its coverage either being like flamethrower for like the cleft keys of the world or um, flash cannon um, or earth power or something of the sort so I think it's really good offensively but what made Hydra so good in draft in my opinion was the ability to run just scarf specs life orb and just blow through things um but also the ability to run like really fat roost sets with either defog or t-wave or fat nasty plot sets were really really solid and hydra has some incredible defensive utility in that sense with that dark dragon typing um not being scared by a whole lot and being incredibly bulky so i i do agree i think um hydra is much worse this gen solely because of the roost uh nerf or the loss of roost um i think that's really really brutal on it and if not i think it would actually be underrated i think it would be pretty solid so next up we have thriller here saying i know a lot of people will get on me for this one but to be honest to you personally uh from using it for the first time in a league it didn't really do anything only has gotten a few kills at most i do uh, see the appeal for it but it seems a very underwhelming in my opinion i have heard this from a few people and i actually I, now i don't know how true this is because i haven't been super watching all the dpl games um but i did hear that chiyu hasn't been performing super well in dpl and people are kind of meh on it right now um and i can see why now as a raw breaker it's incredible this pokemon kills things and if you can position a specs chiyu in overheat kills fire immune pokemon it's so damn strong right but the issue with chiyu is it's typing and being a fire dark typing especially just being weak to rocks you don't really want to run boots a lot like bundle since that you can run boots but you really don't want to or lose a lot of its potency and either not being scarf or specs um and even scarf is pretty incredible but it's the fact that its speed tier is mediocre so other scarfers do that speed it or scarfers outspeed it because your specs um it's weak to most priority options or it's just pretty frail in general in the sense that it's going to die to them anyways especially after hazards so it's a pokemon that you can kind of position to get a kill every time it comes in but you might be put in a position where you kind of have to sack it off after getting a kill or positioning it in once because you can't let something else set up or you don't have a switch into x pokemon that outspeeds it and kills it and you know things like that so um and it really does well against like fatter teams like even nasty plot variants against fatter teams could be really cool um i think flame charge sets could be cool like nasty plot flame charge if you can ever find the opportunity to position that maybe on like screens offense but i don't know I don't know. Interesting. I, I, I haven't used it myself, so I can't say whether or not I 100% agree yet, but I understand why he's saying it. I know a lot of people feel that way, so I, I don't think this is too hot of a take. Thriller. I think you're good. All right. Next up, we got Jay Bear saying Moon, unfortunately, is barely missing a lot for me. Um, Barely missing a lot is, is an interesting <laughs> tone of words, but I, I actually agree. As much as it pains me, I love Roaring Moon. It is such a cool design, and I enjoyed it in BBR. Uh, now, I think Moon is much better in a free Terra format where you can Terra Dark or Steel or Flying or whatever you want to Terra into and be really, really potent. Um... But I also think that people kind of expected different things out of Moon. They expected it to be like centerpiece win con. This is what I'm going to send to win the game every game. Where I feel like it performs much ba better as like an enabler and like something that sets up another breaker in the back with like U turn or something like that. Like uh, Moon with a strong like poison or steel or something that really punishes like, you know, fairies and, you know, other steels and you know things like that i think is a pretty incredible pokemon i think that's where it, it thrives best with like scarf sets with uh choice van i think is by far the best moon set and if you're going dd you're probably going like booster acro um and that set's really cool too especially for like great test matchups and things like that moon can be incredibly incredibly solid in that sense um and i think it's very good but it is definitely not as good as we thought it was going to be so i as as much as it pains me my favorite pokemon from this new generation i have to agree I, just, I have to agree, unfortunately. So, Next up, we have Lars here saying, I'm with you on this one. I hate this thing. It either isn't strong enough and misses its stuff. I also can't play with it. Not my type of mod for sure. Another one for me would be Titan. Completely underwhelming. Doesn't get any setup chances and sometimes misses out on an important KO. It's almost likely over very overpriced for a fairly one-dimensional playstyle. I So we already talked about Bundle. So Titan, 
Man, I don't know if it's overrated now. I know at least at the beginning of the gen it for sure was. I was one of the people who thought Satine would be really good. That Pokemon is terrible. It is unbelievably bad. I, I And I can't explain it other than draft it and try and bring it to a game. It does not kill anything. It does not live anything. It does not outspeed anything. It doesn't do anything. And it's just, it's so tough. I really want it to be good. I love its design. It has like top one shiny in the game. Um, It just looks so cool. And I, I really thought it would just elevate like this hail slash snow play style with all the buffs that we got to um, the weather. But it just, it still isn't good. That that ice typing still isn't good. You're still stuffed by waters. Maybe like a Terra Electric. Um, What do you call it? So Titan could be cool. Um to really punish those waters but and even those steels trying to come in on it like i don't know icicle crash like earthquake slash superpower and like terra blast maybe an ice shard i don't know um it never has the opportunity to run off like it's weird like belly drum sets or anything like that either um sheer force it just doesn't have the move pool to really take advantage of it so i don't know i wish it was good but it, it really is bad Next up, we have Marcelo here saying, I saw Garchomp at 18 points in some Paldea Dex leagues. Without scale shot, it doesn't make sense to me. I actually disagree. Now, I could say you saying maybe it should go down a point or something like that, because I think that's where we have it in BBR this season. We have it at 17 out of 18 or something like that. Um, but I think Garchomp just plays differently this gen. We're used to Garchomp swords dancing, scale shotting, winning video game. But now Garchomp has become like, in my mind, a top three hazard center in the game on top of being incredibly strong having a great offensive and defensive typing having the ability to still swords dance and break which you can do i mean in the past garchomp used to run like swords dance earthquake stone edge stealth rock you can do that or you can run it with spikes now which is incredible spikes are such a good tool for garchomp because garchomp forces such telegraph play and switches that getting up a spike on that switch is pretty darn easy so you don't even have to be like the fat dragon tail helmet sets you can be offensive chomp and still run spikes um i had garchomp with chien pao and the smog tour and i love the combination i absolutely love the combination i would just get up spike after spike after spike and have a really good time Alrighty, next up we have an FQ saying both of the new Volcarona forms are super overrated. Slitherwing gets permawalled by a lot, and I've never seen it put in work. Iron Moth seems good at first, but in reality, it's frail, weak, and worse than OG Volcarona. Don't trust these paradox fraudsters. Well, okay, I do think that they are worse than Volk. Um, Slither for sure, obviously. Volk, it's like debatable depending on what you do, but I think that they're both incredible Pokemon. I've used both and am using both currently right now. Um, I love Slither. I think it's very versatile, whether it be like as a Scarf set, a Band set, um, bulk up variants, or like fat Will-O-Wisp variants. It doesn't need to beat everything, but the bug fighting typing is so good offensively and defensively. I mean, we've seen it before in Pokemon like Buzzwall and Heracross and things like that. Like, I, I really do think that it's a really really good pokemon incredibly versatile i think gohan on the over uh, on the underrated video actually says slitherwing and i i super agree it has great coverage offensively and defensively it's incredible um great utility great facilitator for your offense like slither i think i have slither plus dragapult and victini in a league and it has been very fun i like that i like the team a lot um and greninja so i think it's great with hazards as well really cool mon iron moth is a demonic terra captain i i really think with terra it's really incredible. Now, you could say it's overrated without Terra, and that's fair. I used it in Smog Tour, and it, it wasn't as good as all the Terra Moss I was seeing. Um, it still did work, though. Uh, it still found the position to win a lot. Now, obviously, it can't set up like regular Volt Cam, but it's more immediately threatening, which I think is really nice with that fire and uh, poison typing on top of Energy Ball and Discharge and Dazzling Gleam and all these things, plus like Terra Blast, like Terra Water and Grass Sets are incredible. You can compound boost with Fire Dance and not have to set up Quiver Dances like Volk would, which is great. You can rock out with Booster Energy Sets, or you can even rock out with like an Agility Booster Energy Set and just kind of go for game from there if you can find that one opportunity to set up an Agility, which you can on Special Attacks. It's a really good Pokemon, so... I don't know. I, I am going to disagree here. I like both of them a lot. I've used both of them and they've done phenomenally for me. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of the the, the Paradox Volk duo. Um, I mean, all three of them are great, though. Like, and, and again, I probably think that Volk is obviously better because it's just such an incredible Pokemon with Terra. Um, but yeah. Next up, we have Iju here saying Espathra and Goldango. Espathra for sure. It is a, it is, that is 100% a, a, a trap mon. Just absolute bait of mon. Like, I don't know. Now, if you're drafting a Spothra and you're not tearing it, then it's even worse. And I think everybody kind of realizes that and doesn't really do that anymore. Um, but even with Terra, it's a very predictable playstyle. And it's, it's a big noob killer. I think it's very good against people who don't know how to 
deal with set up in these snowball mons. But it's realistically not too difficult to deal with. Even if it's like terror terra fairing, terra fighting and things like that. It's not very bulky and the Pokemon that are typically checking it anyways don't really like not check it anymore once it gains that typing. You might have to run a resist barrier and assault vest but as long as you don't let it compound 87 boosts you should be fine and just don't let it do that. Um, you have to play very particularly around it and it forces very specific prep but I think if you know how to build around uh, build against it it's, it's really not that scary of a Pokemon. Goldango is an interesting one because I think Goldango is incredible. I think it's a really good Pokemon. I just don't think it's a Pokemon that you should build around. I've seen a lot of people take like round one Goldango and I think Goldango is another Pokemon that like is amazing because of the fact of like the things it offers for its team. Um, the fact that you can block hazard removal and status and diva, like all of these things is really good. Ghost plus steel is an incredible offensive and defensive typing. I've actually seen mostly nasty plot sets do really well, like really fat nasty plot recover sets with just dual stab. Make it rain is like probably one of the most spammable, spammable attacks in the game right now. Um, and it has focus blast, thunder wave, like a, a bunch of really cool tools. I, I think it's a great Pokemon. I think it's overrated if some people are drafting it as like, their centerpiece i build around this pokemon mon you know what i mean um i think that's where it really really struggles and um ends up kind of not being worth it you know all right next up we have razor claw saying toad's cruel why is this thing chilling in 11 to 9 the mon's garbage ability ruins it i wish i had another one to swap in between i do agree the ability does kind of suck right the ability does just blow chunks but i actually think the pokemon is okay um we're gonna go ahead and take a look because i could be just talking on my ass right now and it could be terrible so let's go ahead go here look up our good friend toad scroll i know that it gets access to spikes it's decently fast as well with a good you know typing offensively and defensively ground to grass isn't terrible obviously you got to be careful about um you know ice beams but you know most grass types have to do that in general you have dazzling gleam earth power energy ball slash giga drain foul play is a great option flash can just a lot of weird coverage it's a knock mon and knock in this metagame is very hard to have um so i like that least storm is just a strong option Leech Seed, um, Light Skin Reflect, Rapid Spin. It does get Spore and Spikes and T-Spikes and Toxic and uh, things like that and Taunt, which isn't very good. Now you are kind of like forced to go last because of Mycelium Might, which is not a good ability. Um, but it has niche applications. Our boy that we just talked about in um, Goldengo, you can Spore it. Now you kind of hit it with Earth Power anyways, but say he's an Air Balloon set or something like that. Um, you can Spore it on the Switch End as it tries to prevent the spin. <laughs> The ability isn't good, but I think the Pokemon is good. And I think it doesn't rely on status enough for that to be a super big hindrance, if that makes sense. Like, obviously, Spore, Spikes, T-Spikes are great, but it does other things. I've seen offensive Toad Scrolls pop off just because the Ground Grass has good matchups sometimes, especially into like with like Dazzling Gleam and, you know, things like that. Um, it could do some cool things. Uh, you know, I, I really do think it's not that bad of a Pokemon. So I get that its ability blows, but it's still okay, you know? Okay. Next up... We have uh, Kecleon made it. I, am, I, I don't know how to say your name, but Kecleon did make it to Pokemon Go. So congrats, because I know that's been your name for so long. Big congrats to you, G. I know you've been waiting for him. Uh, Roaring Moon and Salt Boy are overrated. Meowth I don't feel as strong in draft as it may be an OU or VGC. Um, we already talked about Roaring Moon. Salt Boy, I'm, referring, I'm assuming is referring to Garganackle, and I could not agree more. It's a very annoying Pokemon on the ladder, right? You're playing standard OU metagame, um, even like uh, Battle Spot, whatever it might be. It's pretty damn obnoxious. But when you know it is coming, when you know it is coming and you say, okay, I'm going to bring this Pokemon for Garganackle, and I'm going to put the item Covert Cloak on it, and I'm going to make this Pokemon irrelevant. I don't think that it's very good in that case, then. I, I really don't think it's that good in that case. I think when you have an item that completely stuffs you that any Pokemon can run, I don't like it. Now, obviously, you can run like curse sets and be maybe a little bit more offensive. You could be a great rocker. You could do other things. But I think because of like the salt cure potential, it's priced pretty high. Um, and when it's priced that high, I don't think it's very good. And I also don't think it's very good when it can't Terra because rocks isn't a great defensive typing. It's just not a great typing in general, you know? So I'm going to I'm going to agree there with the uh, salt boy. I'm not a big fan of him. Miascarada, I actually think is very good provided it's not overpriced. I have seen it overpriced. I've overpriced it myself at the beginning of the gen, but I think if you move it down a little bit and you recognize all that it can do for your team, I think you would, you know, change your mind. I think it has great coverage. It's a strong knockoff user. It has a great speed tier in a very slow metagame. Spikes and T-spikes, momentum. Um, Protean is a great ability as well as the ability to go like, you know, 
with just overgrow sets are another very viable option. Um, and it, I don't know. I feel like it is a very solid enabler, spiker, like offensive spiker, um, item remover, things like that. So I actually I actually like Meow Scrotta provided it's priced correctly, which in a lot of places it isn't. So I think that's fair. Okay. Next up, we have Wagon Fruit saying, I think if you know how to progress the game against Fat Mons, Dondozo is not great at all. Attack investment ones might be the best, uh, might even be the best of them. Moopool is way too crap for it even be good, uh, for it to ever be good, good or fun to use. I actually agree. I used Dondozo in DGBA recently and I absolutely did not like it. I wouldn't say despised it. I brought it to a decent amount of games. But it's a very weird Pokemon since that you'll check what you need to check. But if that Pokemon has any form of momentum or your opponent knows how to double or your opponent gets up any hazards, so you can't run helmet anymore and you have to run boots or whatever, um, it is very, very easy to take advantage of Dondozo. Very, very easy. And if anybody has a competent draft, I think they should be able to deal with Dozo pretty well. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. it. It seems like when I was building with it, it me bringing in a check something would put me in a worse position opposed to me bringing a more offensive check and a more offensive team and just trying to check things offensively um i if it felt like it was always putting me in a position to lose and i i didn't like that so i for sure agree here with um wagon fruit okay next up we have pano here saying torkoal not a big fan of weather and draft and for its price you get something uh, you can get something uh more better offensively a better setter remover or something better defensively lots of points for a style that is easily prep for now i think torkoal is much better this gen i actually was never a big torkoal guy before i think it's much better this gen but i do think that it is a bit overvalued because we see the shiny new protosynthesis mons or even some of the even like mon like iron moth which is a you know future paradox that doesn't get the ability really appreciates that sun boost right like really really i'm gonna take off my headset because i'm not really talking to anybody other than you guys um really really appreciates that um sun boost but it is very expensive and you are kind of giving up an actual top tier Pokemon in order to ensure that you're going with, um, you know, the Torkoal to facilitate your son. Now, I think it's still a very viable option. I don't think it's a bad thing to draft, but I agree. I probably wouldn't draft it very often either, um, especially because I think Scovillain's kind of meh. Uh, maybe a Venusaur came back. Um, I don't know. Or maybe Scovillain's better than I think and it's just hard to fit on teams. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's a good Pokemon. It has its uses, but I'm not a big fan of it either. So I agree. All right, next up we have Dell, the first of two Dell ones. And he says, Rotom Wash and Heat. Using both, they are really not worth the points, especially after losing so much utility without Defog and Pain Split. They're just boring to use now and much more one no. I agree. I think the Rotom Forms are definitely much worse this gen. I still think they're great, though. Like, I, I don't think that you shouldn't draft the Rotom Heat and Wash because they lost Defog Pain Split. Um, I think it's a big, big boon to them. Like, losing the Defog especially is really big to me. And Pain Split can be really nice on certain sets and whatever you want to go with. Um, but I still do enjoy them and they still do check things phenomenally defensively. They're still two great defensive typings alongside Levitate as their ability. Um, so I wouldn't say they're like overrated. I say they're worse, but I feel like people have kind of recognized that they're worse for the most part. I don't know. Next up, we have Badass Frostless and Garganackle, which we already talked about. And he said exactly what I said. A Pokemon you can shut down entirely by slapping on a Covert Cloak on something is kind of just not good. And I agree 100%. Then we have Dale again saying Roaring Moon, which we did talk about. I've yet to see anyone uh, make that Pokemon dominate a dominant force on their draft team. It feels like it needs Terra to function at its highest potential. Overpriced. That's fair. Next up, we have Aquarius here. Oh, we're getting pretty close to the end. Oh, my goodness. Um, next up, we have Aquarius here saying Dondozo, which we already talked about. I was a fan at first, but it seemed the more I see it used, the more beatable I think it is. Wouldn't pick it for more than nine or so, which I do think that is typically lower than that. But yeah, again, we talked about Dondozo. It seems like it kind of puts you in a worse spot than a good spot, you know? Um, and then we have Periscuto. Worst mon this gen than Floatzel, yet people are afraid to tier it lower than 10 or 11. I agree. Um, I love Skuda. I think if Skuda got flip turn back, it would be better than Floatzel, but it, it doesn't. Um, I also think that Rain in general is terrible this gen. I think Rain is really, really bad this gen. So I wouldn't even recommend drafting Rain. And maybe if you get a Pelipper and you you do it because you have a Palafin. Now, a Rain Sweeper is something that likes the Rain. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm not a bit... And then maybe you draft Floatzel because it's cheaper for some reason. And uh, you have, like, a Rain element. But a Rain team is not a good idea in Gen 9 in general, too. Which is always going to hurt Rain Mons and their viability and their likingness to get drafted and all that stuff. Next, we have Chuxo saying the correct answer is Meow Scrotto, which he kind of talked about a little bit. And we have Dee saying Garganackle, which is another common one that we saw on this list. Um, who are we going to give the thumbnail to? We're probably going to give Garg... And do I want to be clickbaity and go 
iron bundle. We got two iron bundles. I'm not putting moon on the thumbnail. You can't make me. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do Hydreigon. Uh, but then we also have uh, Hydreigon as the next one, which again, I think we talked about. <laughs> Gohan said it's worse than Iron Jugulus, and I know there was like <laughs> a fight to the death over this in my comments. Um, I think that Terra Jugulus is really cool. I don't know. I recently drafted Jugulus, honestly, because Gohan on the last video said that it's super underrated. I didn't have the opportunity to tear it, but I am excited to try it in general. So I'm really hoping that you're right and it is better than Hydreigon, because I'm going to have. Jugulus in an upcoming Wi-Fi League and Hydreigon in an upcoming Wi-Fi League. So I guess we can settle this debate in the next two months, right? Because I'm the objective guy who makes sure that Pokemon are good or not, right? And then we have Sandan saying, in my opinion, Rillaboom is overpriced, which is post home, but you know, it's Galadex or Paldeadex. Um, he gets his own progress. Uh, he gets his own progress, of course, but after the Glide nerf, he can't revenge mu that much anymore and does even less damage. He's easily walled by every flying and even steals wall him in Gen 9, Paldea. It, if he returns, because he'd be losing high horsepower and I'm assuming superpowers, I was gonna say. Um, and lots of knocks. So, I do. Hmm, it depends. Because if you're talking about old Rillaboom, if Rillaboom kept Grassy Glide, because he doesn't have Grassy Glide anymore, right? And in that sense, he is not good anymore, which means he will be priced lower. So, I don't think he's overrated. He's going to be priced aptly, in my opinion. Because people are gonna recognize that Rillaboom without Grassy Glide is not that good, especially with the loss of superpower and high horsepower, which it did lose. So, it doesn't lose just two of those and keep Glide. Glide is gone. It does keep knockoff, however, so I want that to be known. Knockoff is in Blackie's level up move pool or Grookey's level up move pool. It does not lose it. Um, so it is a knockmon, which is valuable. I think as a Scarfer, it'll be okay. And I think if it's priced correctly, I would draft Rillaboom still, um, just because of the fact that it can force its own progress decently well. But obviously, without Glide, um, and then high horsepower and superpower aren't as big, but especially without Glide. It's just not a very good Pokemon, um, and it really isn't worth drafting <laughs> um, very often. I don't, I don't know, unless it's super cheap. But I, I do want to clarify: it keeps, it keeps knock. It loses Glide, high horsepower, and superpower unless they add those moves in as move tutors by the time Rillaboom comes back, or they add them in at a later date. He'll probably get them again. But um, yeah, that's gonna be the list. Again, let me know if you agree, disagree what your most overrated Pokemon in the format is and drop some uh, questions down in the comments below so I can have another video to do next week on these. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you next one, later.